Hello everybody, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Care and I'm here today with Joshua McMiller and we're surrounded by his paintings from his show Revelations of Nature and this show is going to be up through November 30th so come on in and see it and that's November 30th 2021 we're almost at the end of the year and I remember first meeting you, uh, Joshua, or I'll call you Josh, so you don't think you're in trouble. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, which was in early 2020, and here we are at almost at the end of the year in 2021. Well, much has changed. Mm -hmm. My hair is Your shrank. Hair? Yes, uh, that's it's much shorter. But, um, but it's been wonderful to have a solid year here of learning, through nature, mm -hmm. through um, the energy here, the mm -hmm. other, the other artists, um, just just getting a feel for Vero Beach. It's been wonderful. Because nature is what your show is all about. And of course, mm -hmm. when you moved here, when I first met you, you had just come from New York City, where there's nature in Central Park, I guess. But we don't really think of New York City as a natural place. Where Florida is Florida. It's full of flowers. It's abundant. It's Mm -hmm. It's got every sort of flower you can imagine. And Amazing plant. life everywhere. Yeah. And the vibrancy really is something that speaks to me and something mm -hmm. I feel like is an important part um, that's missing in a lot of people that live in major cities a lot of time. That, mm -hmm. that, that frequency, I, I visited Central Park every other day mm -hmm. um, being in New York just because of the fact that I wanted to get back to nature. Um, mm -hmm. throughout the seasons that that was a hub of that type of energy that exists here year-round. Now when you first came here though you were doing more abstract work with mm -hmm. a little bit of nature thrown in. I was particularly impressed by a very large piece of canvas that I think you had actually sewed together to make even larger and it, That's right. it's, it still exists. It's a picture of the canal outside of your your house window, your patio window, and your dining room. And That's I was right. really impressed by it. Yeah, the, the grass stalks are about um, six and a half feet. Uh, mm -hmm. The piece is seven feet by eight. So, yeah. I mean, it's a ginormous piece and it's just really beautiful. I, I really wanted to capture realism, but also show that spark. I, it was a very muted um, piece and with, uh, with the petals and some of the things and the vegetation on the grass like really alive and that that was really my introduction to mm -hmm. Vero and art. Yeah and I think you were sort of immersing yourself not only in the landscape here but in in your art. Oh and, yeah. In the landscape because it is a huge painting and you told me before we started this interview that you were thinking of cutting it up and I'm, I'm advising you not to cut it up. I take that advice. Um, it's just terribly difficult to get into a home. <laughs> it's doors. That's true. It isn't stretched though. You roll it up and don't you? And so. it, I, I'd, I'd stretched it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I, can, I can undo it, rebuild if you I need You will it. find the perfect place, I, will. I am sure. Um, one of the things that uh, sort of reminded me of that is the one that is right over here, which is called Bougainvillea Kiss and yes. also Bougainvillea Peck. <laughs> I think of them as one piece because they obviously started out at one piece and then you cut them to fit two different frames and I would rather they were, you know, you had conceived them as one piece. It looks like they're, you know, you can buy one or the other, but if you want to buy both folks, it's only $1,500 for the two. <laughs> and, and you really need to have them because they're, they're framed in the gold frame that says art, but they're Absolutely. two different gold frames and the picture continues. The branches of the Bougainvillea continue from the large picture into the small one. And I think that's sort of cool. You know, I actually um, painted that 
while I was in New York. You know, we spend mm. a lot of our time still in New York. So okay. um, sometimes I have like, I'll go buy some canvas, roll it up and, uh, you know, bring it, bring it to town. So mm -hmm. that's what I did with the Bougainvillea Kiss. Um, I saw this beautiful Bougainvillea tree uh, that this summer, mm -hmm. um, well, no, last summer it was. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just screaming in comparison to everything. I was like, I just want to kiss it. So that's where the <laughs> name came from. <laughs> Don't um, hug it though. They're pretty, pretty sharp, pretty thorny. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, it was metaphorically, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, with, with that piece, um, I, there was, I, I, I loved the length of it. Um, but, but at the end of the, the, the canvas was frayed. So, so I adjusted it. Well, you know, I, the thing that, that strikes me when I look at your paintings, especially your florals, is abundant. I mean, mm -hmm. you have lots of everything, lots of flowers. The, the, uh, the, the stems in that painting almost look sort of muscular. I mean, they look very physical. And I guess it's sort of a physical process when you paint it. Certainly you're it using is. some palette knife. Did you use any brush at all in that painting? No, just 100% palette knife. So it's come straight from your arm to the canvas. With, Absolutely. With not much of an intermediary, just something to, to uh, ladle it on with. And there was this um, unusual uh, gray uh, concrete wall that was behind it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it was really beautiful to do um, a version of that concrete mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the palette knife behind it as well. I was I wondering if it was a solid surface that you were portraying or it almost is is there almost an opalescent or a pearlescent paint in there because it has almost a luminous quality. No, I, I just mixed a lot of colors, uh, mm -hmm. primarily black and white. And that's where you see the gray with um, mm -hmm. with with the colors. Somehow as well. it's a lot more luminous than just a plain wall. Maybe a wall with Wonderful. bright sun on it, but it really works very well together and I like the dance the of two. the colors there. Yeah, the yeah. kiss and the peck have to go together, I think. What, I agree, I agree. I know that one of your favorites <laughs> in the show is the one that's called Joy's Field, which oh, is almost goodness. a square. Yes. And it's a lot different than the ones we've been talking about, the huge untitled one, or even this one that has this, uh, this vibrant uh, physical quality to it. This one is a lot more almost like a botanical or an illustration of different plants in a field. Absolutely. How do you explain the difference? The difference between, say, the Bougainvillea Kiss or, um, or in this joyous field, I walked into this field and felt so much joy, you mm -hmm. know? Different locations, different plants, different species of grass, they all give you different energy. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just like you see the white end of these, um, of these long stem grass pieces, mm -hmm. the way they were blowing in the wind, the way the wind was capturing everything around, mm -hmm. it was so gorgeous, I, I, I felt compelled to start to paint this. Um, and, and that's what really moved me to paint this piece. Um, it just, um, there's something about feeling the energy and capturing the wind behind it mm -hmm. that brings so much joy. So, hence, Joy's Field. Now, that must be a, a picture of a field up north somewhere. What state was that in? That was on the way um, from New York uh, to Florida. Sometimes I want my car mm -hmm. to be in, in the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we stopped, I think it was in Virginia. Mm -hmm. yep. I see the black eyed Susan and that's sort of a giveaway. You yeah. know, I think North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia. Absolutely. Uh, those a little bit colder climates where you get that sort of real showy summer flower. Yeah, that was right on the side of uh, 95. And <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yes. And well, they've done a lot with highway beautification and plantings in, in this modern times, which is <laughs> instead of that nice mode, you know, grass verge on everything. Absolutely. Now you've used a lot of different media in this one. You used some inks as well as, I suppose, acrylic paint. I did. Um, I really wanted to make sure that the the background captured like an abstract essence um, mm -hmm. and had the essence of the of more trees and things mm -hmm. in the background. So so that's what I started with, and and then I just wanted to go crazy with that grass and um, and bring it to life. Uh, the black eyed Susans are 
are really a special addition as well. I think they add something of balance oh, yes. uh, to the piece. So. Yeah, so you have sort of a, a background that is there but not there with that more abstract treatment uh, yes. up at the top with the inks and the wet on wet technique. Uh -huh. And then you really individualize those other uh, plants very much. Absolutely. Uh, and, and then I guess um, uh, one of the other ones that I liked really well was the Magnolia Magnifique, which I think is a little bit like the Bougainvillea. Again, a yes. southern plant, a southern flower, but actually you have them in Florida and they go all the way up into Virginia, it, North Carolina. They do. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the wonderful Central Park. Mm -hmm. um, some, sometimes springtime in Central Park is just phenomenal because it creates a, a thirst for the plants. So when they start to bloom, it's just, it's beyond. So are the mosquitoes, you know, it's a small <laughs> season. So they're really, really aggressive. However, um, that was uh, taken this spring and mm -hmm. I saw mag the magnolia and just I was so happy to see this vegetation on mm -hmm. uh, coming f coming forth. If you notice on the uh, magnolia, uh, there aren't there's not much vegetation. There's not much. Mm -hmm. So um, it's something about the the springtime where these start to blossom. Mm -hmm. The magnolia starts to blossom without much vegetation. Exactly. So it's really, really yeah, beautiful Yeah, the leaves to really fall off more in the springtime and then the, the, the uh, flowers come on. That one has a lot of depth, a lot of sculptural quality in the oh. way the light is hitting the blossoms. Thank and you. then you have that woven background which is almost sort of a steely color. So mm -hmm. it's almost like that painting, you're combining the north and the south with the flower that blooms in both places. Absolutely. That's, that's like me. You know, I, 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 <laughs> you're a flower <laughs> that blooms wherever it's planted. Absolutely, I, I um, think of myself sometimes as a uh, farm-to-table artist, mm -hmm. where I am just focused on bringing forth whatever is the best for that environment. Um, mm -hmm. Meaning, like whether it be the beauty in the magnolia tree in Central Park mm -hmm. and um, incorporating it with my nature's touch mm -hmm. and or um, being in Vero Beach and, and collecting all kind of uh, beautiful pieces and inspiration mm -hmm. from so many different uh, types of plants and wildlife here. It's amazing. And of course you have the ocean in both places too, but it's a very different oh, vibe very different. <laughs> in both places. And, you know, speaking of vibes, yes. you have beach vibe here, which oh, is totally Vero Beach. That is 100% Vero Beach, if you could, yeah. Um, the only thing, uh, I, I remember sitting outside of a popular restaurant here in hotel, mm -hmm. and I was overlooking um, just the view and taking in the wind, and, um, and that's where that piece came from. Yes, with the sea oats uh, yeah. waving in the wind, a little bit like those fuzzy caterpillary grasses. Oh yeah, uh, that's up north. Yes, um, what I really love about beach vibes is um, the freedom involved. I, I just let go, mm -hmm. and instead of focusing on it being so perfect, um, really deconstructing that idea yes. and making sure that it had a space of freedom. Um, I can tell this, this, the sea oats by the shape, but then you've gone a little Jackson Pollock on us in the bottom part of that picture. I do. Did I, you know that was coming when you started the picture? I didn't. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, um, I don't focus on that. I just really get inspired on the inspiration and then, I mean, um, and you get into the groove. I get into the. I get lost in it. So, um, so yes, <laughs> I'm surprised mm -hmm. sometimes. When, <laughs> and whatever when, comes down from above, you just sort of it goes right on. It goes through your arm, through that spatula, and onto the canvas. Absolutely, absolutely. I am merely a vessel, and mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I really love connecting. Uh, you know what? What the pandemic has really done is really put a spiritual space. Um, for me, in my mm -hmm. art, a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. I, I want to connect to the emotion and the energy behind nature, not so much just perfect 
perfect picture of this, uh, you know, orchid or two looks. Right, you want the whatever. feeling behind it. And of course, a lot of people will understand this because nature seemed to be the safe place we could go during all of this. It, it Not was. socializing, but going to nature and going also to our own thoughts and mm -hmm. our own feelings and examining them instead of always thinking about what to say next to the person next to right. us. Right. So. It, it really taught me to be present and mm -hmm. um, just staying in that presence with whatever uh, piece of nature that I was in, it, 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 uh, that I was surrounded by, has really, really um, done me justice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really think just calming down, being quiet and paying attention to the energy mm -hmm. is, is much more fulfilling than doing a quick snapshot and not and moving on to the and next thing and next not thing. really getting a chance to think about what you're doing at that time. Mm -hmm. It's just so much life. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at any um, plant at any given moment, you, you find in, in Florida, at least mm -hmm. you'll find like 30, 30 insects, 30 different oh, yes. species around yes. this, this. I mean, it's life giving and they need what we breathe and we need what they breathe. I think that's a very good thought for this moment in time after a, after mm -hmm. a world uh, meeting on climate change and everything else and how important these, I think, you know, everything that you're talking about here, you can see that you're absorbing the times right now. Mm -hmm. And while flowers and florals and pictures of plants are sort of as old as the hills for artists, um, you're putting some new life into them because of what's going on. You're making them important to right now because of what you're feeling and thinking about right now. Absolutely. I notice that there are a lot of multi-panel pictures in here. There are four multi-panel pictures, and I, I do count the bougainvillea kiss. And, as and, a diptych. And the, yes, as a diptych. But you have some that uh, have started out and remained diptychs. Uh -huh. Yeah, one of those, I think, going from beat vibes is Vibrant Love Field, which is one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it is a triptych. It's not a huge triptych. It's a small triptych, but it, it seems very large. And I think people looking on their video screens will really not know what size this particular piece is. But it's actually only... Um, Oh, it's 36 by 36 all put together. 36 by 16. By 16, I'm sorry. I, no I, need, to, I need to read. I need to get some new glasses. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but it's a lot smaller than you might think. It and is. yet, I think what we're talking about, going back to that uh, sort of gritty, in the moment feeling, this one is even more than the, uh, the beach vibes. It looks like you're moving towards something something a lot more spontaneous. I agree. Um, that, that is very, very accurate because, um, you know, throughout my art career, um, I remember being in high school and I was, I was kind of, I was the senior artist and um, doted on a lot for my art. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that meant nothing. That meant nothing to me. It can I even wanted, be a bad thing because you get a little bit complacent. Oh, I'm the absolutely, best. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. So for the last, say, 15, 17 years, mm -hmm. I have really focused on deconstructing that mm -hmm. and get stepping away from the perfection and, you know, not interpersonally as well, mm -hmm. but stepping away from the ideals of what I have to be and what this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's what I'm doing in, um, in Vibrant Love Field. Um, it's about getting the energy of vibrant life and love out mm -hmm. through plants mm -hmm. you know i'm using the plants here as a vessel to really send a message of freedom like mm -hmm. absolute freedom it, it is available to us we all you know mm -hmm. kind of worry about having our freedoms and liberties and things taken away but it's a mindset you know we can really mm -hmm. channel our mindset to being free and focusing on the beauty of something that doesn't have to be so perfect. So this journey has really taught me. It, it's sort of a lot. you go sort of go from A to Z here. What does putting, for example, uh, this one we're talking about, vibrant, vibrant love field. Mm -hmm. What does putting it on three separate canvases do that? it couldn't be done on one canvas in, in this vein. Exactly. Um, sometimes smaller things speak louder mm -hmm. and sometimes we need to hear messages times three. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you don't get it the first time. You don't sometimes. And that that's the that's what I really mean. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it just felt right. I don't know why I picked three in the moment, mm-hmm. but but once I started to really do the strokes and um, really focus on the piece, it just became. It, 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 I understood why I picked um, three canvases to do this on. I think that there, as you have them hung here, there's just a little bit of space in between. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. Um, I read that as a quiet zone. Just yes. a moment of quiet and then pop back into the, the thick of the, the, uh, the noise and the sound and the color that your painting has. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe you need that little breather in well, between. I, I do because mm-hmm. this piece actually scared me coming from mm-hmm. the far end of the spectrum of perfectionists and graphing things and doing all these things that that brought out the perfect imagery Mm -hmm. um, was something that I had to deconstruct and really um, get to the feeling Mm -hmm. of what I was trying to portray, not so much the perfection. Well, I think our viewers need to know that when you were a mere child in grade school, you Mm -hmm. were very good at drawing portraits. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that takes... (laughs) Actually, to draw a portrait and to have it look like the person and have that person go, wow, that's me or that's him or that's her, Mm -hmm. it takes a certain type of understanding of composition and perspective. You know, how far apart are their eyes or how do they hold themselves even? Even if you're doing a head and shoulder, there's something about posture. You have to be sensitive to all those things, which you were, which is really, in a way, detailed work. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get that sudden realization that took you a lot longer and a lot more detail in something that's a lot more spontaneous in these pictures now that aren't pictures of people at all. Absolutely. Um, I'm really focused on that because I, I think, you know, whatever gifts we have or whatever we're used for, we have to kind of um, really go into it. And, and I learned, I, I wanted to learn it from all different angles from uh, learning how to do something correctly, mm-hmm. you know, and then putting my spin on it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, of course, there was there naturally. Yes. But I didn't focus on, um, you know, I wasn't, mm-hmm. kids aren't perfectionists like that, you know, it's, no. it's, it's our adult But you minds. were. You came from a bit of a perfectionist family. I did. A family of professionals. I did. Who expected a lot of you, expected, your mom expected you to become a scientist. That's right. <laughs> and that didn't quite work out. No, no. She, but she didn't fret when I changed my major in college, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. You know, she just, um, my dad was an artist, so she kind of knew that side of us mm-hmm. would, would be available. Um, yeah, so, I mean, mm-hmm. she supported both ways. Yes. Yeah. But, but dental uh, school didn't quite capture the imagination. No, I, um, I just became a very uh, B student that didn't mm-hmm. really think twice about it and wasn't as interested as I thought. Um, so I, I wanted, you know, art like made, you know, I remember in first grade, my, uh, my art teacher, I got in trouble because I got so excited that it was art time. I started shaking my crayon box, <laughs> you know, and I, I just made so much noise. And she was like, you, you, you're not going today. And I was like, you know, it was traumatizing mm-hmm. almost. <laughs> but you're shaking that crayon box now. You can tell in I this shake particular. <laughs> yep, turn it upside down, stomp on it. <laughs> And, and that's really great. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any picture you want to, uh, us to end up on that is one of your favorites that where you're really shaking that crayon box, where you're, you know, you're not staying in the lines, or have we talked about them all? Um, we, we have talked about most of them, but there is one special piece that, um, that I really, really um, think about on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just finished it. Um, it's the Fig and Happy on, okay. over here. Mm-hmm. A little play in words there. Fig and Happy. It's a fig tree. And um, I was looking at it from a different angle. And it's something about palette pieces. But I really wanted to combine all of the things that you see throughout the collection in this mm-hmm. one piece. Okay. Um, and, and that was my focus um, from the vibrancy that you see in the Bougainvillea. Um, to some of the textures that you see in Joy's Field and mm-hmm. a few others, mm-hmm. l- Vibrant Love Field. Um, 
that's all there in this one piece and it really speaks to me. You're sort of looking down at the top of the plant, so you're not seeing it as much of a plant, but sort of as an explosion of leaves or petals. And Absolutely. Things. So it has sort of that flower thing going on, as well as the green of the plant, as well as other colors that mm -hmm. occur in those fig, fig or ficus plants, I guess. Yeah, and also, one more piece that was quite special, um, the bamboo cool. Uh -huh. I was about to start a job and um, in New York mm -hmm. that was just a totally different trajectory of my life and during that job I started doodling bamboo. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was in my mindset or you know to it was in my mind to know how to draw bamboo. I just started doodling 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 and then I said you know what I'm gonna paint this later mm -hmm. and and then I heard a podcast and they told a story about Chinese bamboo mm -hmm. and how, that it takes about five years to germinate. Mm. So you plant these seeds and you um, water it like you would a normal plant and you wait. for five years and wait. <laughs> farmers think you're crazy if mm -hmm. you're doing it, other farmers. And, um, and within three weeks of this plant germinating, bam the bamboo stalks are 15 feet. <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> you can see and hear them growing. Yes, practically. and within six weeks, they are um, 30 feet, a whopping 30 feet. Wow. So uh, that was a parallel to my life. I had been planting mm -hmm. a lot of different seeds, and um, especially and through been art. Germinating. And I've been watching them germinate. And now it's a really exciting time. So that's a special mm -hmm. piece as well. So now you're just, you're creating like a rocket. You're going up and, Absolutely. and growing up to 30 feet. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for talking to me today about your work. Again, this is the Center for Spiritual Care. We've been talking to Josh McMill McMiller about his work, uh, Nature's Revelations of Nature. And it's at the Center for Spiritual Care through this month, November 30th, 2021. Thanks very much. I'm Ellen Fisher again. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs>